A Boost Mobile specific version of the Iconia phablet we saw at CES is afoot, and we have one here in our Charlotte offices. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Boost Max unboxing. ZTE wants to break into the US market. It did so first with the Nubia 5, but now we're getting the Boost Mobile version of the Iconia phablet we saw at CES. This is called the Boost Max. Basically, it's the same exact phone. Inside and out, they look pretty much identical, and this one is simply specific to Boost Mobile. Anybody who's familiar with that service, it starts at $55 per month, and what that gets you is unlimited talk, text, and data. And the longer you use the service, the lower the service price gets. So it shrinks your payment over time. Without too much delay, let's get inside the box and talk a little more about the phone, not the service. So it has a little pull tab here on the back for ease of use for breaking into it. Let's get a nice ripping sound there. If you pull up some tabs and flaps, you get to this. So I thought I was going to need a knife to get into this packaging, but I actually don't. Once you pull it out of the box, you actually have this uh, recycling bag, which is pretty standard for Sprint and its you know prepaid services or the other networks that are the MNVOs that are on its network. And you have this paperwork box, which is uh, your getting started guide and your important information. Nothing terribly spectacular there, but it does say be heard. Be heard. So actually, this thing is actually very easy to get into. It's got an open tab. I remember these boost devices from when I worked in retail, and they were always a pain. You had to cut them open with scissors or with a knife. So I'm glad they updated that. That's very nice. Here is that the actual phone. So it's actually big, nice. We'll move that to the side really quickly. This is your standard micro USB cable, your power block, of course, and this. This is a removal tool, which many of you might be familiar with, but this one is actually not for the SIM card. If you move this closer, you can see that it is actually for the micro SD card. It's because this thing is actually, uh, it does have LT capabilities, but the SIM card is embedded, so you can't remove it. This is for the SD card, which is nice. You actually get up to 64 gigabytes of additional storage. And if we move that to the side, we'll get to the device. So once you get the device in your hands, it's easy to see that this phone is actually very substantial and nice. It's nine millimeters thick, which is pretty average. It's not super thin or super bulky. Um, it feels substantial and it feels very nice. It's weighty, but I don't know the exact, exact weight on it. We didn't get that in the specifications or anything. So I don't know the exact weight. We'll get to that later in the review and stuff but it is a very substantial feeling device. The 5.7 inch display is nice, it's big, but it's only 720p, so that is kind of an upsetting part of such a big device. We've seen it so many times before. When you have a device with a display that's this large, 720p is kind of substandard. Uh, we like to see 1080p, but you're only paying $299, so you can only, you know, you can't pick straws with something like this. The internals are for the most part on par with a lot of the low-end devices we've seen lately. It has a Snapdragon 400 chipset inside with a 1.2 gigahertz dual core CPU. It has a 3200 milliamp hour battery, which we're very happy for. Only one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. So it doesn't have top tier specifications, but you are getting good value for the price. $299 would not normally net you such a substantial build quality. This thing feels fantastic in the hands. You've got the metal backing, which I think that's actually, it may be plastic, but it feels like metal, which I'm okay with that. And then it's offset with a soft touch at the, po the top here, but on the bottom, it's also offset with some soft touch, but it has a nice big perforation for the speaker down here, which is for the Dolby Digital Plus audio. Um, there are some surround sound audio capabilities in the software. Then you have this nice big speaker on the back. Of course, it's on the back, so we're not sure how well it's gonna sound, but there is that branding there, so. We'll, uh, we'll hold out to see what it actually sounds like once we get some time with the device. And one of our favorite things here is the camera key. We have a shutter button. Also on that side is the power key. That's on the right side. The left side you have the volume rocker and the micro SD card slot, which is you have to access with the tool, which is kind of a hit or miss, I think. Um, having one is nice, but having to use a tool just to get to your SD card kind of defeats the purpose, I think. Um, you also have your micro, S or your micro USB port here on the side, which is interesting because we don't normally see that anymore because it gets in the way when you're using the phone. You'll have to use the phone with your right hand and it could be awkward for someone. Around back you have an eight megapixel camera, which is capable of 1080p recording and then your LED flash. And of course, finally, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So before we jump off here and start playing with the device, 
Let's do a quick power on and see what the display looks like and how quickly it boots up for the first time. And while it does that, we also have, of course, the standard capacitive buttons here at the bottom, but you actually have a menu key, it looks like, instead of an, a task switcher. I don't know, I can't remember, that might be a task switcher, but it looks like a menu button, like an old antiquated menu button. So here we are, um, if we take this, it's actually, you get into it like the like with the Nubia. Let's test that out really quickly. It is, it's a menu button, it is not a task switcher, which tells us that we're probably going, yeah, you have to hold the home button to get to the task switcher. Um, at, at first glance, the display doesn't look terrible. It looks pretty nice, at least for a 720p display on a 5.7 inch phone or 720p resolution on a 5.7 inch display. So this has been the unboxing of the Boost Max for Boost Mobile by ZTE. I'm Taylor Martin. Stay tuned for the full review, which should happen in the next week or so, and I will see you next time. Folks, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click the thumbs up button below to let us know and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future, as well as more Boost Max coverage over the next week. Find us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech, and I will see you next time.